Hello everybody. Right before I recorded this, I spilled a coffee drink everywhere. <laughs> it was really tragic. I just wanted to share that. I just wanted to share my pain. But anyways, I got something a little special for you guys today. Hopefully this will be a real treat. <laughs> Recently, a well-known political commentator absolutely wrecked himself for all to see. Once known for destroying arguments against liberals with facts and logic, <laughs> he has since disgraced himself and his sex life with poorly constructed hot takes aimed at Cardi B's recent song, WAP. I'd like to take you buns down the rabbit hole today to discuss, and also have a good hearty laugh at Ben Shapiro being an absolute goober. For those of you who may not know, this is about a fella known as Ben Shapiro, who you may have seen doing speeches at colleges in the US, trying to nail arguments by talking faster and louder than his opponent. I don't like judging people for things that they can't change, but his weasel goober voice does not assist him in this. Like, it makes him look worse than he already does. Honestly, Pierce, you've kind of been a bully on this issue because what you do, and I've seen it repeatedly on your show, I watch your show. For more context, he's a guy you may have seen a clip of, which makes him appear very tone deaf. So let's say, let's say for the sake of argument, that all of the water levels around the world rise by, by let's say five feet over the next 100 years, say 10 feet by the next 100 years, and it puts all the low-lying areas on the coast underwater, right? Which, let, let's say all of that happens. You think that people aren't going to just sell their homes and move? Just one small problem. Sell their houses to who, Ben? Fucking Aquaman! But this guy isn't an idiot, which is sad. Or at least he's book smart, right? Fella is a lawyer and a professional, what I will call angry political guy, I guess, who founded and is editor in chief at Daily Wire and owns his own podcast, The Ben Shapiro Show. He's written 11 books, has a Bachelor of Arts in political science, and went to Harvard Law School. From what I understand, he owns his own law offices. But unfortunately, you can study every book in the world and still not have access to perspectives that come from a life outside of your own. He was born in 12th century in January of 1984 to two Hollywood parents, one being a television exec and the other being a composer. His cousin is a writer and former child actress. He has lived in LA his entire life and is currently married to a doctor and has three kids. He has his life cut out for him. And you know what? Good for him. I'm sure he worked really hard to obtain the knowledge he has, but like I said before, you can be book smart, but that doesn't mean you can be street smart too. You can write a formal paper that winds up in educational pieces, but you you can't get inside everyone's head and learn to understand from their lives and perspectives. Personally, I feel like that is extremely important when it comes to political conversations, but nonetheless, let us continue in today's little goof. So during our golden age of the 2020 pandemic, Cardi B and her female-only collaborative song, WAP, dropped. I'm going to try to keep this as family-friendly as possible, but WAP stands for wet-ass, uh, P-word, as Ben calls it. I'll just be referring to it as WAP in this video, if that helps any. And to be absolutely real with you guys, it's a song about female sexuality. It's just one horny anthem. That combined with the visuals makes it maybe not the song for everybody. For some though, the song speaks to them. It's liberating to see women just do their thing, accept their sexuality, and it not be twisted into some objectifying, like, commercial of sorts. The song has become the first female song to debut with over 50 million streams in the United States. Not only that, but WAP has become a big meme. Big meme. <laughs> but there's something that would become even bigger than WAP itself. Bring in our boy, resident, conservative, and political commentator, author of a book that essentially says porn is destroying America, Ben Shapiro. For some reason, this fella took to his podcast to critique WAP, and this is where the gold comes in. On his podcast, The Ben Shapiro Show, he says that within 48 hours of release, the video got millions of views, and that it's... It is a deeply important piece of American art that we should all pay attention to. Perhaps a smidgen of sarcasm. He continues. It is deeply empowering. As, as a sympathetic human being, I just want to make sure these ladies get the care they need. My wife's medical advice is that they go to a gynecologist ASAP. Don't worry, guys. It only gets better. Here it comes. And that they, and that they do whatever checks are necessary for bacterial vaginosis, yeast infection, or trichomonas. Trichomonas. <laughs> trichomonas. <laughs> 
I will revisit this one later, but you guys, trichomonas is not a word. So he reads out the lyrics of the song, which is one of the <laughs> one of the very big mistakes he makes with this entire podcast. I said certified freak seven days a week. Wet ass P word. Make that pullout game weak. Bring a bucket and a mop for this wet ass P word. So once he gets the lyrics, you'll need a bucket and a mop, he stops and goes on this spiel about how it's not biologically normal. <laughs> That it's unsexy because it sounds like they're describing a quote unquote serious condition that requires medical attention. He goes on about his wife being a doctor, which is not a good look. Not a good look at all for her. I mean, a bucket and a mop? This sounds like there, there's some there's something that is going on here that is not biologically normal. And by the way, the song is so unsexy that it frankly sounds like somebody describing what amounts to a serious condition that requires the care of a doctor. Fortunately, I know a doctor who is my wife. And so I asked her for her medical diagnosis and she looked at the lyrics herself. And after being kind of appalled by them, obviously, there are a few sort of giveaways here. So first of all, a bucket and a mop for this wet ass P word. So first of all, she had to clarify whether wet ass P word was a description of the P word or whether one of the clinical symptoms here was also diarrhea. Bring a bucket and a mop. So this suggests that there's an awful lot of, um, not to be too graphic, but some sort of uh, medical discharge that's happening here. I also just want to point out medical discharge, medical discharge. I just, <laughs> who's it going to tell him? Because clearly his wife isn't. And I don't know if it's that she's a bad doctor who just doesn't know any better, or if she's goofing around being funny, or if she's lying to Ben to make him feel better. I don't know, but I want to believe for the safety of her female patients that it's just a joke. But then there's this bit where he talks about the kegel line. On top, I want to ride. I do a kegel while it's inside. Apparently, there, there are signs of prolapse. Um, and, and I say that because hop on top, I want to ride. I do a kegel while it's inside. So there's some signs of some actual clinical prolapse, which is which is a problem. There which then he goes on to talk about prolapsing. <laughs> so when you get older, your muscles can weaken, right? Such as your pelvic floor muscles. And this can put a woman at risk for pelvic organ prolapse, which is when your pelvic organs droop. They can, I know this is a little scary, but they can fall into or out of your vagina. But I am fairly certain that this has absolutely nothing to do with the song. And he knows that. I'm sure he's just being a smart ass, but just in case he didn't, or someone listening doesn't know any better. A kegel is a type of exercise you do to strengthen the, mu the muscles of your pelvic floor. That means the muscles that support your bladder, uterus, small intestines, and rectum. So they may help people who may have urine incontinence, pregnancy, or you have issues with farting or pooping on accident. <laughs> or likely in the case of the music video, strengthen orgasms. I don't know, common sense would allude to the latter, but I guess Shapiro is getting something out of pretending they have some sort of condition. Cause I guess the, the women are like 90 or something. So alongside trying to go on about it being some sort of medical condition, he of course has to go for feminism. This, this is what feminists fought for. This is what the feminist movement was all about. Uh, it, it, it's not really about, you know, women being treated as independent, full, rounded human beings. It's about wet ass P word. And if you say anything differently, it's because you're a misogynist. I mean, it's a political podcast, isn't it? Gotta splash it in there somehow. He also takes it to Twitter to tweet these masterpieces. Listen, guys, I fully explained on the show that it's misogynistic to question whether graphic descriptions of wet ass P word <laughs> It is empowering for women. WAP is obviously an incredibly profound statement of women's women's empowerment, a la Susan B. Anthony. As I also discussed in the show, my only real concern that the women involved, who apparently require a quote-unquote bucket and a mop, get the medical care they require. My doctor wife's differential diagnosis, bacterial vaginosis, yeast infection, or trichomonas. Oh, baby, no. Just amazing, purely amazing. So now that we've seen the man himself preach his gospel, let's talk some sense. So at some point in his video, he claims that it's vulgar, very vulgar. He's fair and entitled to that assessment. Doesn't mean that it's a fact, but he's allowed to think that. He's allowed to dislike the song, which he clearly does, but something is a bit iffy about how he is spending his time on a song like this. It's very clear from his background and taste that this song is not meant for people like him. He's on record saying rap is 
isn't music, so clearly there's some things he doesn't understand and doesn't really vibe with when it comes to this genre. But let's step aside for a moment. I really want to talk about what I just said when I said that the song wasn't made for him. That doesn't mean he isn't allowed to listen to it or critique it or even enjoy it if he did, but it's important to know intent and context when something is made. For instance, there's like Native American flute music or something like that, right? It has cultural significance to Native American people, and even if it isn't entertaining to the average person, it's still important, it's still art, and it has its place in American music with everything else. You'd be considered a not so great person to claim that Native American music isn't real music, right? Because you're trying to take away or demean something that wasn't made for you. A children's TV show may be annoying, but again, it isn't made for you, it's made for children to enjoy. And it being made for children does not mean that it's not art. I definitely get, you know, being annoyed by children's songs, but it's still, it still has its place. With WAP, it's a song made by two black women. It's a song for and about women. With a lot of rap, it is made by and for African Americans. Not all. Even if it isn't your sound, trying to diminish and take away rap is taking away a piece of African American culture. That doesn't mean if you aren't an African American you cannot listen to or enjoy rap, of course, but it does imply that there are underlying meanings and contexts that you may not glean from if you don't already understand them. The reason people may go after you saying it's saying you're misogynist for critiquing WAP isn't that it's this amazing, profound, intellectual piece. The song is something very rare for women of America and the world in that it's a song about female sexuality sung by females. They aren't side pieces dancing in a bikini in the background of a male rapper song. They're in the forefront wearing what they want, saying what they want, singing about things that are seen as taboo and vulgar. But the thing is, female sexuality has always been painted as this for a long time and even though we are in 2020, women are still fighting for equality when it comes to this in particular. There are countless, countless songs of men singing about their genitals and their sexuality and it's normal. There's movies displaying male sexuality and it's normal. But when it's a female, it's vulgar. In many instances, you can use the word penis, which is not a bad word, but somehow the female counterpart vagina is sometimes seen as a bad word. Female parts are regarded as nasty and disgusting when male parts are not. Sometimes, but not always. You know what I'm saying? Do you see the imbalance that they are seeing? A man coming home to his doting wife who puts up with him and does exactly as he pleases with no question about it is an old school barbaric practice, which unfortunately hasn't completely fizzled out yet. There are still people actively today who believe that women are beneath men and their duties are to only be sexual when it's expected of them from their husbands. It is seen as dirty or impure when a woman is hypersexual, but you don't really see people referring to men as dirty or whores or sluts for doing what they are biologically designed to do. There's so much unnecessary importance strung into female sexuality, where the less sexual a woman is perceived, the higher moral ground she's perceived to have. Women should be allowed to pursue whatever sexual avenue they want, just as anybody else. Whether it be in a bedroom of marriage or not, it's her choice, just as it's any man's choice. Of course there's a concern for sexual health and safety, but like, <laughs> there should be. And it should be promoted way heavier than the way abstinence is promoted, for instance. Sexuality is a normal functioning part of an adult human's life, and only women are very used to being policed when it comes to that. So seeing a video and song of only women singing openly about sexuality, it speaks to them. There's not a single male in that song. There's no male implications in the video. It's females who seem like they're proud of what they're doing, proud of what they have, and are flaunting it. It's like saying, no, you're not dirty or gross for enjoying yourself. Be proud of what you got. Use it how you like. Girls get horny too. It's really frustrating for one, per one singular song to come out about female sexuality and it be perceived as gross. Female bodies are not gross. If you have boobs, Big or small, round or flat, perky or saggy, they're not gross. Vaginas, which also come in different shapes and sizes and such, not gross. Whatever you came out of the womb with is not gross. It is a part of you, just like any other limb or body part. And you should never have to feel disgraced or uncomfortable for what is naturally yours and what it does naturally. So yeah, you can dislike it, you can critique it, but keep in mind that there aren't many songs like this one. This song portrays the perspective of women in control of themselves. And to some, it's done in a way that's funny and digestible. You never know who is listening or what the intended result is. You never know who may stumble upon it, who has been suffering, and then seeing these two confident, thick women in complete love with themselves may help someone who's been struggling with their own similar body. You just don't know. And if someone's calling you a misogynist for you dissing the song, it's not because it just so happens to be female rappers shaking their butts with just hashtag empowering, it's because it's a very rare video in which two female rappers are doing whatever the f they want, singing about themselves in a way that isn't extremely 
extremely common, doing whatever they want without it being wrangled by some man. It may not come across as empowering to Shapiro, but again, it's not made for Shapiro. He's not in the driver's seat of the perspective that this song is trying to drive through. Let me also slide in there that for black women, sexuality and confidence can be even more difficult. A lot of black women are portrayed as disgusting and promiscuous and are exposed to sexuality and sexual encounters way earlier than they may be mentally prepared for. They are sometimes forced to quote unquote grow up way too quickly, only to be harshly criticized for it. Their perceptions of sexuality is warped and twisted before they can even get a clear grasp of it for themselves. The thing is, the things they turn around and say about these women is absolutely vile. So yes, even if it's not what appears to be important in the forefront, you never know what subtle meanings it may have an effect on some people. There could be a girl who feels disgusted with herself and the things that she may have to have gone through in her life up until now, but sees two confident beautiful women rapping about themselves and their sexuality with imagery of their genitalia being pieces of art, i.e. the statues in the music video. The girl may see that video and think, you know what? I'm not disgusting. I am a work of art. I am valuable. My sexuality is valuable and therefore she's probably going to be more likely to take care of herself. More likely to, not even in a sexual way, value herself. Also, sexual health is not shameful. Let me just slide that in there. <laughs> and speaking of sexual health, Ben Shapiro talking about the lyrics as if it's some dangerous medical condition is just... <sighs> An absolute down to earth yikes. And I want to add extra importance to this part, even if I had some funny statements in it. Sexual health for girls and women has been an ongoing battle for forever. There's many women who have never in their adulthood visited a gynecologist or get pap smears because they are embarrassed and scared. They feel their parts are vile, dirty. We have normalized that vaginas are these body parts that need to be, need to be shielded from the public eye, that they're dirty and embarrassing. That is, that's despicable. For those who do not know, I want to become a gynecologist in the past. <laughs> Obviously that's an avenue I'm not going down, but I still study female sexual health anyway in my own free time, as I feel it's important and it's not taken seriously enough. I take female health seriously and want to increase how seriously the public takes it. Unrelated to my gyno dreams, but related to female sexual health, I ended up suffering from a chronic illness that affects females, and it's not commonly recognized by doctors. When scheduling an appointment to look into it with my- after talking to my therapist, the therapist told me to be extremely persistent and stick up for myself so when I bring it up to the doctor they won't brush it past me. Doctors are known not to take female health experiences as seriously. Not all of course, but some. When I explained it to my doctor, they had to look up the condition and read about it on the spot because they had never heard about it. And it's not necessarily rare either. Women also sometimes do not have access to gynecologists, but that's an entire argument for a different time. The way America handles the maternity and delivery is, is also abysmal, but again, different topic for a different time. The fact of the matter is, females have been getting the short end of the stick when it comes to their sexual health. There's a whole bunch of stuff I could slide in here to further illustrate that, including a bunch of medical documents, but the biggest point I want everyone to glean from this is not all people have access to what should be common knowledge, including all genders, and including Mr. Shapiro himself. So mini sex ed time. Since unfortunately Mr. Shapiro and his wife apparently haven't had access to that, vaginas naturally lubricate. The excess that comes out is referred to as discharge. That's why a lot of female products have liners in them, such as underwear and bathing suit bottoms. On a normal day, there are normal textures, smells, and when that deviates from the norm, that's when you should pay some extra medical attention to. The texture of your discharge also changes depending on where you are in your menstrual cycle, which is normal. Typically, women who are looking to get pregnant or sometimes avoid pregnancy can actually help estimate where she is in her cycle by the texture of her discharge. Tackier discharge means infertility and a more runny, clear texture of discharge infers fertility. If it's cottage cheese-like in texture, it could mean a yeast infection. And when a female is aroused, they produce quite a bit of fluid. This is meant to safely lubricate the vaginal canal for successful insertion to help with friction and to help in sperm being able to swim into the uterus and fertilize an egg. This excess fluid can ruin undies. That is why people refer to having towels 
goals during sexual experiences. I a bucket and a mop might be a bit excessive, but it's not meant to be literal. I'm pretty sure it's a hyperbole, which I would hope Ben Shapiro understands. But again, I suspect he's being a bit of a smartass, or at least I would hope so. So let's talk about the infections he mentioned. Again, importance for being those who may not know and may glean false information from what he says. You never know what dude may hear or read what Shapiro said and falsely suspect his female partner to be infected with something and then maybe like shame her or something, you know, give her a hard time when what's going on is natural, you know what I'm saying? So he he mentions bacterial vaginosis, which I'll be shortening to BV. BV is very common and happens when one of the naturally occurring bacteria, anaerobes, forgive me if I pronounce that wrong, outnumber the good bacteria, lactobacillus, I think it's pronounced, forgive me. <laughs> the symptoms of BV are burning, itching, and a foul, fishy smell, and off-color discharge, which is usually described as gray. 29 of people with a vagina experience BV in their lifetime, which is over a fourth. So I think that's pretty important to know. It should be taken seriously because untreated it can lead to premature birth if you're pregnant or you can more easily pick up infections such as STDs or pelvic inflammatory disease. Has nothing to do with an increase in vaginal fluids. Also, having BV does not make you dirty or gross. Then there is a legendary yeast infection, which is more commonly known, and god I would hope so, which is estimated that 75% of women may get in their life. Almost half of females have multiple instances of it. That's very common. So like BV, a yeast infection is an overgrowth, but instead of bacteria, it's a fungus called candida. Again, candida is a naturally occurring fungus in our bodies, but something about the environment inside the vagina is off and is promoting an overgrowth. These symptoms include itching, burning, soreness, pain, or discomfort during sex or urinating, and an abnormal discharge which is described as thick or white. Again, it has nothing to do with an excess or having a lot of female lubrication. And yet again, it doesn't make you dirty or gross if you or someone you know experiences it. And then there's my, my personal favorite, trichomonas as he calls it, which again, is not a real word. I think what he meant is trichomoniasis, which is commonly shortened to trick. It's an STD. It's not a bacteria, virus, or fungus. This one is a parasite. This is one where you could have it for months or even years without any noticeable symptoms, but it's thankfully easy to solve. What sucks though is how easily it spreads and it affects both females and males. For women, they may experience itching, burning, redness, soreness, discomfort, peeing, and a change in discharge. Untreated, it can lead to issues with pregnancy and can lead to a higher risk of STD or other STD infections. The vaginal discharge is usually strong smelling and may be discolored. As opposed to other infections, trick can actually cause a production of more discharge than normal. But I, I, I highly doubt that it would require a bucket and a mop as our tender loving Shapiro worries about. And if you have any sort of suspicion that you are going through any of these conditions, definitely do not be afraid to look more into it and assess that. It's not gonna kill you if you don't, but uh, you should value yourself and take care of yourself. What grinds my pickle is that you don't know who's gonna see or read his crap and start panicking and thinking something is wrong for naturally occurring lubrication. With how much of a mess female health is already, you really don't need to be taking what Ben Shapiro is saying seriously. For those who may not already be established, for. Discharge and lubrication is not a medical infection that requires immediate action. If you're having abnormal symptoms, however, go ahead and take those seriously. But they're not anything to be afraid of, just as you should take care of anything else you would. You are not dirty, vulgar, or anything of the sort if these things happen to you. For these things, even if you have an infection, just make sure you take care of it and are happy and healthy being. And honestly, if any of you are struggling with your vaginal health and are too nervous to discuss it with another female or adult, you are welcome to DM me. I may not have a medical solution if there's something medically going awry that needs a doctor's attention, but I could, at the very minimum, give advice or be a shoulder to lean on and babble to if needed. Of course, I will say you should go to a doctor if you need to. I will 400% recommend that. Also, wipe front to back. Let's get to the part many of you may have been waiting for. The clownery. I don't normally like clowning on people, but Ben Shapiro is a notoriously freeze-dried dingleberry. So here's the thing. When women are aroused, they self-lubricate. The muscles of the vagina also relax. When the opposite is true, so when a woman is uncomfortable or not ready for intercourse or not enjoying what's going down, the muscles tense and she does not produce the additional lubrication needed for insertion and intercourse. So uh, I, I really don't know how to say this other than, other than just going out and saying it like this. Ben Shapiro outed himself for not knowing how to please a woman, and the internet is absolutely donking on him. For context, some people are donking on him for saying the P word instead of the word itself, but I won't, I won't personally dunk on him for that because I know how difficult YouTube can be. 
So if you see that, people saying the P word, that's why. Everything else though, fair game. Let us peruse these incredible memes. We will begin with someone remixing poor Benny's reading of the lyrics into the song. What you listening to, son? I don't think you like it. Well, why not? I like this new generation of music. Pull out game week. Yeah, 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 you effin' with some wet ass P word. Bring a bucket and a mop with this wet ass P word. Give me everything you've got. I don't give a hoot about WAP, but these Ben Shapiro tweets are hilarious. Like, he really just confirmed to the world that his dick is atrocious and hit asked his doctor wife about getting a woman wet and she's saying it's a symptom of an STD. I. <laughs> ben Shapiro when he's going down on his wife. Damn, y'all don't take it easy on the poor fella at all. <laughs> when you epically destroy your wife in a debate over whether or not she came. <laughs> Ben Shapiro eating his wife P word like, stop, I'm sweating. <laughs> what ass P words exist? White conservative man. Sounds fake, but okay for argument's sake. <laughs> if feminism's so great, why can't my wife achieve orgasm? Five. <laughs> all right, all right. That's it. That's it for today. That's all I got. <laughs> that's all I can take. All I can handle. So, uh, thank you guys so much for listening to this. I hope this sounds entertaining. If not, I'm just gonna. So, in the past, I've been advertising Etsy, but I've had to close with the poor boy because I ran out of stuff. I ran out of things. I didn't have many things, and I sold out of the things. And I'm glad that you guys are buying the things. I'm surprised that you're buying the things, but now I need more things. So if there's any things <laughs> for me that you'd like to see, definitely comment below. And I'll try to get those made, like stickers, charms. If you have any ideas, send them my way. I won't be able to probably make every single suggestion, but I'll take them into consideration if I have the time. So thank you guys so, so much. As usual, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about the video, or the art featured in the video, drop them bad boys below. You're also more than welcome to drop video suggestions below. I'd really like to know what you guys would like to see from me, whether it be uh, the topic of the video, but also the speed paints. Taps knocking. <laughs> Here are today's lovely featured artists. These are artists who post in our art feature channel on Discord, and if you would like to be featured yourself, please go slide into Discord, join the- and pop into that channel and post your art. Just make sure to check the pin post and know the rules before you post. You're also welcome to join and hang out if you just like to join and hang out. I'm thinking of doing uh, watch parties on Saturdays or something, so if you guys are interested, definitely let me know. Sorry, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of things, but okay. I really value you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Also, thank you for 40k. I'm really, really blown away because I think literally a year ago I had just 400. So I appreciate it a lot. Sorry I'm really slow trying to catch up on things, but I will get there. <laughs> I will get there. So have a good one, guys. Be good, be safe, wear a mask. Bye. <laughs>